morning. It's great to see you guys today. Will you stand to your feet with us? We're going to begin our service just by worshiping God together, you know, coming just all together in this room from whatever our week has looked like, whatever, whatever journey we are on in life today, and just worshiping God together, lifting up our songs, lifting up our hands, lifting up our worship to Him, and believing that as we sing, that God will come and He will meet us here in this space. So I am so, so grateful that you joined us today. I'm so thankful that you are here with us, and I believe that God has something intentional, that there is a reason that we are here today. So let's pray really quick, and then we'll just open this place up with songs of praise. Would you pray with me? God, we just welcome you in this place. God, we come together, we, we gather together today just to exalt your great name, God, to lift you up high. God, we pray right now that you would just be the Lord of our lives, the Lord of these songs. God, that we would just fix our eyes on you. Would you come and just fill us up with your Holy Spirit as we worship you today? God, I pray just for fresh and new encounters with you. God, would you come and just maybe even reveal yourself for the first time to those of us. God, we thank you that we can come together today just as we are and you would come and meet us here. God, we worship you. Just have your way.
I've been just praying and worshiping and just coming and, and looking to God just in this season and preparing our hearts for, for Christmas as we celebrate the coming of, of Jesus and our King. And I felt like God was just kind of reminding me and coaching me a little bit in my prayers and my worship. And I want to offer that same that same coaching to us today. And I felt like God was saying, you know, before you come with your with your requests, with your asks, with your with your needs, with your wants, and and, and don't hear me say that it's wrong. I think that we're allowed to go to our dad and our father with, with everything that we want to see happen with our needs. But I felt like God was saying, before you do that though, Lucas, would you come and would you just adore me? Would you come like, like the shepherds and like the wise men? And before you ask, would you come and bring your offerings and your gifts and your worship just because you want to be near me? So my hope is that for the rest of our worship today and even just this next song as we sing these simple words of come let us adore him that our worship would be just that our, our offering up of our adoration and love for God and this morning as we were praying one of our team members shared they said you know I felt like God's been speaking and kind of saying you know sometimes we're in seasons where, where we can't sing it's just too hard and if that's your case just like just even croak just just whatever you can muster or sometimes we, it's too hard to shout out the goodness of God just whisper that we come today to offer whatever we have whether that be a lot or a little we come to adore our King God just come and help us just to seek you first God to seek first your kingdom God, before anything else, we come to adore you right now. Would you meet us here? Just lift it up, come in the door and come and let us adore him. Yeah. That's why we're here this morning, just to adore you, Lord. And come and let us adore
worship you and I worship you and you are here and moving in our midst and I worship you and I worship you and you are here and working in this place I worship you and I worship you come on we sing it cause you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are and you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are and you are here touching every heart i worship you i worship you and you are here Healing every heart, and I worship you, and I worship you, and you are here, turning lives around, and I worship you, and I worship you, and in every heart, you are here, and in every so I worship you And I worship you Cause you are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you are And you are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My 
to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the world from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dust as we are, we can come and worship a king. That just as we are, we can come and offer up maybe what feels like what little we have today. And we know that you, you accept it and 
with you love it so I just want to pray a prayer just of encouragement so over every one of us in this room over any one of us feeling like you know we wonder if, if our praise to our father today is if we have enough to bring and I feel like God is saying if you have brought all you have even if that is little you have brought enough God will we be people that worship you with all that we have in the seasons where that is abundance and in the seasons where that is scarce would we offer up everything we have to you our whole lives for you Jesus God we thank you for your presence just leading and guiding us today just continue to speak into our hearts into our lives God continue to reveal to us the reason that we that we walk through the doors today and let your voice speak God we thank you we love you and it's in your precious name that we pray amen amen Woo. well thank you guys so much for being a part for joining us in worship today the good news is is it's we're not done yet there's so much more that God's gonna do in our time together we are at this time gonna go ahead and dismiss our kids as they're getting ready to run out of this room they're ready to roll can we cheer for our kids we love having them in here worshiping along with us Thanks kids for hanging out. We also want to let you know any students in the room, any 6th to 12th graders, we got a gang already rallying back there. We'd love to encourage you to go hang out with them. Scott's there. So you can enjoy a community time for students as we have our time for the adults in here together. And everyone else, if you would, turn around, wish somebody next to you a Merry Christmas. If there's someone around you you don't know, go say hey to them. Seek them out and ask them how they're doing this morning. All right. Good morning. Good to see all of you. Thanks for joining us this morning. My name is Mark, if we've not met yet, and I am thrilled if this is your first time or first time in a while, and we want to put a name and a face together. And so we would invite you. There's a red connect card in the seat back in front of you. Uh, after service, if you would fill that out and bring that to us, we've got a room out there, Guest Central. It's just a, a room that we can be able to kind of be pulled away for just a minute. We want to give you a gift, put names and faces together, and hear what kind of brought you here and answer questions you might have about our church. You know, every week we have a time that we, we pause and we pray for our, our gifts and our offerings. We've got some giving boxes in the back. They say costly generosity um, on them. Uh, we encourage you to bring your gifts or your tithes or your offerings before or after service, during service. You can drop them in there. You can always give uh, online uh, or in the text to give app as well. You can do that. Uh, but I want to just remind you that as we give, as we make these decisions, uh, this is an opportunity for those of us that are walking with the Lord. We start to look to God and say, God, what are the things you call us to do and, and how do you want us to live? And we understand the scriptures to be telling us that we should be giving back a portion of what God's given us. And so we do this out of obedience, not out of guilt or shame or things like that, but out of a, just a sign of saying, God, we recognize that everything we have comes from you. So we give you back a portion of that. We also want to encourage you, uh, for those of you that call this your church home, uh, we will be receiving uh, at Christmas Eve. We won't pass baskets because we want to continue in this means of being able to have freedom in our giving. Uh, we will be able to have people bringing a year-end gift. I talked to some folks uh, just this past week, one that said, you know what, uh, when we get to the year-end, it's kind of their chance they're going to be catching up on some things. They've been traveling and doing that, and so they're planning to come and, and have that be a part of their year-end. And then I was talking to another friend that just said, you know what, I, I felt like you said, and you've said it, you know, a couple years now, that, that you just want us to listen to God and see what God says. And they said, I think I know what God said, but I'm going to keep asking because I'm not sure that I'm ready to do what God's telling me to do. And so I just want to encourage you, just pray, talk to God, say, God, if you would have me do something above and beyond for my year end, uh, would you just give me the courage to do it? And so I want to pray that we would just be a people that listen to God, we respond, we're obedient to what God calls us to do, and that he would bless these things. Because the reality is all of us could give all the time and above and beyond, but the reality is all of the goodness and blessing in our lives comes from God, and we need him to do the work, to bless it and multiply it in our midst. So let's pray over this offering uh, that has been received today and will be received uh, in the next few days. Father God, we thank you for all that you've given us, for all that you've blessed us with. I pray that you would continue, God, to grow us as a church and as a people in our hearts of generosity 
and our ability, God, to listen to you, to respond to you, to be obedient in all that you would call us to do. God, I ask that you would take all these gifts that have been offered up sacrificially this weekend and, and to come. God, and, and we ask for a, a loaves and fish moment. God, we ask for loaves and fish, multiply them, God, because we want to be able to feed a lot of people. We want to be able to serve a lot of people. We want to see the kingdom of God come to earth in, in radical ways that expand, uh, expand people that are going to be in heaven. And so, God, I just ask that you would uh, multiply this, do a miracle uh, in our midst. God, I ask that you would be the God of provision for anyone in the room that's struggling right now with their finances, that they would see and experience you as their provider. God, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just got a couple quick things for you to remind you. Uh, outside these doors to the back, there is a Christmas tree. It's got a bunch of stuff around it, and you see some paper ornaments on there. Uh, starting last week, we uh, invited the church, you, to participate uh, in an opportunity to bless a local orphanage. They reached out to us and said that they had some needs, and they wanted to see if a church could help, and we said, absolutely. We wanted to be a part of helping with that, and so uh, there are things on that tree that are needs from that orphanage that we will be receiving uh, over the next few weeks. And so we're not going to be getting stuff to them before Christmas, but a lot of this will be things in the week or two after Christmas. So feel free to, free to grab one of those ornaments, bring it back, uh, and bring this stuff back over the next week or two, and we will be getting that to the orphanage. But there are also some things on there uh, that are to help us with our food pantry. We have an increasing number of people that have been showing up during the week that are looking for some help. And so we want to be able to have groceries we give people as a means of serving and helping our community and we need some help with that we have some needs there we're also delivering food once a month to a community in our backyard and so some of the items on there also will be serving our food pantry as we are meeting tangible needs of people in our community and so please consider grabbing one of those ornaments on your way out um, and then also there will be a table that's going to be right in front of you those of you that are really good at dodging past things that we try and get you to do it's going to be right in front of you when you walk out of these doors. We have a handful of these cards left. These are our invite cards for Christmas. And here's what's awesome about them that I'm excited about. They don't actually invite people. It just says simply Christmas. It has service times, location, and our website. Because we believe that the most powerful invitation is not a card, but it's actually you relationally reaching out to somebody to connect with them. And so this is just the means of giving them the where and the when. But we want to challenge you this Christmas to consider, is there someone that you need to make a personal invitation to? And then let them have this as the means of reminder of where and when that's going to be. We also have a card that some of you may have gotten on your way in. If you didn't, we can get you one of these. This is a card that we uh, are requesting for any of you that are looking to serve or available to serve at our services. We know there are going to be people coming onto our property that maybe we've not seen for a little while uh, and, and some folks that will be here with family. So we need some help with first impressions and with children's ministry in particular. Now the reality for the kids ministry is it's only on the nursery side of things that we we need help. Uh, all of the older kids are going to be in the room with us. We've got activity packets and it's going to be a fun service anyways. And so it is only for the nursery side. So if you're willing to help serve in any capacity here, we've got the service times on this card. You can check which one you're interested in. Uh, it's got the two areas, first impressions and children's ministry and your contact information. And now here's the caveat. For those of you that, uh, that will fill this out, that's awesome. But there are some of you that are longtime servers here that just you assume that I don't need to fill this out. You know I'm going to be here. Please help me out and bless us by letting us know you're going to be here uh, because we really want to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to have Christmas be an amazing time for every guest that comes onto our campus. That being said, we are going to be actually continuing our series, Simply Christmas, today. Uh, we're talking about how we push back against some of the things that the world has made Christmas about and how it overcomplicates some of the beautiful simplicity of how God wants us to actually live during this season. And you all are lucky because you're getting an early Christmas gift today because it's not me that's going to be teaching you. It's going to be Carrie. Don't clap that loud, Jim. Would you welcome my wife to the stage and not mock me, Jim? Thank you, Jim. I'll totally pay you for that later. I really appreciate that. 
Uh, you know, it figures on a week that I'm getting to teach in this series, Simply Christmas or Simple Christmas, and unpack the idea of simple love. I should probably start just by confessing to all of you, I was not super loving this week. Uh, there were moments that I was really impatient with my husband, and I was not loving with him. There were moments that I failed to be present with my kids this week and love them well. I judged a lot of people in traffic that wanted to drive slower than me, okay? I want to be really honest with you. I was not super loving this week, and so I just want to start with that point of confession, but I learned a lot, and I'm excited to dive into this topic with you. Before I do, would you pray with me? Ah, Father, we are so grateful to get to be in your presence this morning. God, to be a part of your family. And so we just ask now uh, that you would use me in my shortcomings, uh, that you would teach us through your word. God, I pray for your ears to hear and for your eyes to see. I pray that you would challenge each one of us this morning with this idea of simple love. God, we love you and we're so grateful for your love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You know, yesterday was my son's birthday. Uh, I have a daughter that's 10 years old, and our little guy Liam turned six yesterday, and so we got to have like a superhero, dude perfect birthday party and celebrate him, which I just want you to know is amazing in the midst of getting ready for Christmas to also be throwing a birthday party. Uh, but it was so fun to get to have friends over and celebrate him. A couple days before his party, he lost his second top tooth, so now he is heading into Christmas with no two front teeth, and nobody prepared me and parenting to deal with teeth stuff, okay? I don't, I, I don't do the mouth thing. I don't do the teeth thing. Nobody prepared me for all the work that was going to go into that. But now he is walking around singing, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. And I'm asking him to say theater and three and all of the words that he can't quite get right, and I'm loving it. Uh, but for Christmas, for us, a lot of the joy comes for me in making Christmas special for my kids and making it a fun experience for the kids and make, creating Christmas magic and all these things that we do. Even before I had children, even when I was single, be the, the friends of my kids, friend, my kids, uh, my nieces and nephews, my family, the children of my family, that was a big part of making Christmas feel special was to make Christmas about the kids. And I have found for me as an adult, that's made it a little bit harder for me to enter into Christmas when it's all about making an experience for other people. And we're going to look at this idea of simple love this morning. And I think there's an invitation for us in Jesus' words found in Matthew 19 when he talks about letting the little children come to him. It says, then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This picture, this idea of Jesus saying, let the little children come to me would have been a radical idea for anybody who was standing around at that time. Children were not viewed very highly. Uh, they were probably lower on the sort of totem pole of value than sinners or poor people. Children weren't seen to have value. And so for Jesus to say, no, let the little children come to me, it's a reminder for us that this simple love is for all people. Simple love means what does it look like for all people to be invited in with Jesus? And I think it could sound for us sort of cute and snuggly, right? This idea of like Jesus and the little kids and oh, we've seen it probably hanging on a wall in a church somewhere. But this is telling us something significant about God's kingdom. It's an invitation for us to be reminded, loving people, simple love is about the least of these. The children matter. The other least of these that we may not think about matter to God sinners or the poor or the forgotten or the difficult in our lives. Someone you may know that could even be antagonistic to your faith. All of those people matter to God. And this invitation is to remember simple love is for everyone. I think for some of us, Christmas can be about getting ready for the kids. And I think Christmas is often also about serving other people. It's about extending that simple love that we talked about, about loving your neighbor as yourself. It's an amazing time to serve people and to love people. And we're doing that here. Mark mentioned the giving tree out in the lobby. You could pick up an ornament and take that and go buy something for this orphanage that's loving on kids that otherwise wouldn't get love this season. Uh, you could participate in stocking the food pantry and help us give groceries to feed people that don't have access to food this time of year. I know some of you are thinking about how are you gonna extend love to others by participating in that year-end fund and bringing a gift, a year-end gift to go to this For the City vision to see this church serve other people. 
There are incredible things happening at table gatherings. I know some of you are making uh, little kits for people experiencing homelessness that you're gonna go distribute downtown. We have a table gathering that's been gathering coats for people that need to stay warm this time of year. The Brighton Recovery Center, we're doing a party there on Christmas Day. There's tons of ways that you all, even individually, are serving other people. I think the church does a great job of extending love this Christmas season. And our mission here at the church is to love God, to love others, and to impact the world. And that mission comes straight from the scriptures. It comes from Mark chapter 12, when someone had just asked Jesus, what is the most important commandment? He said, the most important one, the commandment, answered Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think this church does a great job, an incredible job of loving our neighbors as ourselves. The turkey giveaway that we did, the grocery giveaway that we do, you all gave backpacks to kids starting the school year that wouldn't have access to school supplies, hot food giveaway, all of these ways that we serve other people in the church. But I wonder this season if there is an invitation for us to think about this as more than just loving other people. What does it look like for us to experience simple love ourselves? It means experiencing that whole as yourself part. Like how can I love my neighbor as myself if I am not living from a place of being loved? The religious tradition that I grew up in, I don't think was really fair on this topic. And I don't know that it was your experience, but in my experience, this was not a popular thing. This was not something I ever was taught in church. It was always sort of about other people. And I don't know what's normal. I just want you to know that. I have some good friends that I have to ask often, what is normal? Is this normal? I'm not sure. How often should I clean my floors? What do you do with teeth? Mark's mom wants to make a doll with his children's teeth and give it to him for Christmas, right? It's, have you seen the pictures of them? They're disgusting. But I'm always trying to figure out what, what is normal? How should I talk to my kids about this thing? Or what are the rules about this? What about Christmas traditions? What do normal people do? Because I didn't grow up in a normal family. And so maybe this wasn't your experience. Maybe this was just my experience. But the church sort of said, you should love your neighbor as yourself. You should love other people. That whole faith thing was about a self-sacrificing love. Like we should forget ourselves. We should forget our needs. We should only focus on the needs of others. This is sort of a popular thing in our faith tradition. I wanna to suggest to you that that's not actually what God suggests of us. In fact, it's pretty unhealthy. God has made us with longings and desires and failing to acknowledge those. That's how we get to a place of misdirected desires in our lives. I have a friend who says, we shouldn't compare ourselves to Jesus and his self-sacrificing love because we are not Jesus. <laughs> The reality is that Jesus led, loved from a place of being loved. He knew the love of his father. What would it look like for us to know the love of our father? In Matthew 3:17, the story of Jesus' baptism, we hear from God talk about his son there. And of all the things that God could have chosen to say about Jesus, giving him power, giving him authority, all the things that he could have said, this is what he said. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. I'm not sure we can really love our neighbors until we are able to receive love ourselves, to see ourselves the way that our Father does, to receive his love. I think this is difficult for us to imagine because this is not a kind of love that there's anything we can ever do to earn. There is nothing that we could ever be or become to accomplish this kind of love. It's not based on how much we give or on how well you serve others, although sometimes we can serve from a place of trying to earn love. God's love is so far beyond our comprehension that we hardly even have a definition for it. And throughout the scriptures, there are so many words used to describe this love. You could pull a list of them to try to understand it. This term agape love is love as a choice. It's not love as a feeling. It's not loving when I feel like it. It is love as a choice. In Romans 5, 8, the word says that love was a choice God made before we chose to receive it. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This kind of deep abiding love is difficult for us to understand, if we're honest. It's even more difficult, it's even more challenging for us to acknowledge this is something that we cannot earn and that we do not deserve. 
but it is wholly, fully available and accessible to us. Can you just imagine for a minute if those of us that said we were Christ followers, if we lived from a loved place, what would our witness in the world look like if each one of us lived from a loved place and were able to love other people from a loved place? In 1 John 3, 1, it says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The Father lavishes his love on us and calls us his children. We are his children. He loves us. Can you imagine if we lived as loved people? And some of you hear that term fatherly love, and that's difficult for you. And I get that. You have images that that conjures up of what your love from your father was or memories or perhaps a void. And so it can be hard to grasp fatherly love. And I think that the holidays tend to bring out the best and the worst of family junk, right? I shared with you guys several weeks ago, we had 20 some odd family members stay with us at Thanksgiving and it's not because we have like 20 rooms they were camping out in the basement and sleeping in the playroom and on the couch and, and people were everywhere and in the days leading up to our family coming into town Mark and I started talking about it. I'm like okay of all these people that are going to be staying in our home we have someone that's navigating a divorce right now we have four children in the family of a, a couple that's navigating a divorce right now we have someone struggling with addiction we have someone walking out recovery uh, from a food issue Someone that's navigating recovery, addiction. We had a different person navigating depression. We had somebody walking through anxiety right now. And as we began to talk about it, we thought this has the potential to be explosive, having all of us under one roof. And so we asked our family as they were coming into town, hey, how are you coming into this place? And what could we do to love you well? And then we answered that question. And some of them were like, I don't even know how to answer that. I don't even know what I need right now. And some of them said, that was really good for me to be reflective and think about it. And you know, some of them told us ways that we could love them well that I never would have thought of on my own. The family at Thanksgiving thing reminded me how much self-care and self-love really do matter. And I think our culture can get this off, right? This idea of self-care. I have a friend who says anytime she does something for herself, she, she can't even enjoy it because she feels guilty. And I think that's where we have gotten it off in the faith tradition as well. There's a show that Mark likes to watch and they talk about this idea of treat yourself. And I want you to see this little clip so that you can understand what they call self-love for just a minute. Check out this video. Three words for you. Treat yourself. Treat yourself 2011. Once a year, Donna and I spend a day treating ourselves. What do we treat ourselves to? Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. It's the best day of the year. The best day of the year. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that you should have treat yourself day every day, but what if we were to think about that for a few minutes? What would it look like to actually treat yourself every now and then? And I'm not saying, I mean, we could come at it from a place of privilege. We, a lot of us have resources, right? I don't mean get a pedicure or get a massage, but what would it look like to be aware of and attentive of your own needs? Maybe that means you need to take a walk this Christmas break when somebody is driving you crazy. Maybe it means that, that you need to eat food that's gonna nourish you, that's gonna care for your body. Maybe it means going to the gym or committing to get some sleep. Maybe it means taking a break from social media because you can get out of the trap of comparing yourself to what everybody else is doing this Christmas. What would it mean to love yourself well? I'm not sure that we can deeply love or simply love until we are actually able to grasp the kind of love that values and cares for and loves ourself the way that God loves us. It's empowering and it's honoring to be able to ask people what they need and to be able to ask for what we need to live in a way that we are so connected to ourselves and that we're so connected to God that we're aware and attentive to what our needs are. I had a conversation this week with a pastor that I coach and I was checking in with him about how this season is going. It's a busy season and he said, you know, I'm doing okay. I had a rough time last week and I was supposed to go to the serving event that our church does and I found on Saturday I was so tired I couldn't get out of bed and I didn't go. And I was like, oh, well, it sounds like that was probably a wise decision if you're tired and you're coming up on Christmas. And he said, yeah, I think I'm struggling with what if these people don't love me anymore? 
And I thought, that's a really interesting way to think about that, right? Why would they not love you because you didn't show up? Is that what love is when someone does what we want them to do? Maybe that's where love begins, is when you actually disappoint them or don't do the thing that they want you to do. Love starts when we can love without reciprocation, without expectation, but truly love from a place of being deeply and simply loved ourselves. We were able to love because he first loved us. When we live and rest and love from a loved place, we can actually love other people richly. We love because he loves us irrespective of if we choose to receive it or not. I think we struggle with this kind of love because we don't even have a way to fathom it. We were at a conversation with some people in our table gathering recently and we were talking about heading into Christmas and how kids will act out sometimes, right? Like they're overworked and they're, they don't get enough sleep and they don't, they've, they're over sugared and they don't have a bunch of connection and what does it look like to make your kids smile in the picture and what do you do when they start being a jerk and what if instead of like smacking them around and getting them in line, what if we actually stopped for a minute and said, what is it that they need right now? Are they tired because they didn't get enough sleep? Do they need some good food to feed them? Do they need connection for just a minute and to be seen? And I think what's funny is that we can talk about this in terms of when kids do that, but don't we do that ourselves as adults? Act out or act ridiculous out of jealousy or pride or when we're tired? What would it look like for us to carve out space between now and Christmas to actually receive God's love because we are worth that? As we remember and celebrate how after 400 years of silence, the Christ child burst onto the scene to usher in this love, maybe for you receiving God's love would feel like that. After 400 years of silence, something breaking through for you for the first time. Maybe it would feel like a breath of fresh air because you have been holding your breath for months or years. Maybe it would feel like a glimmer of hope in what has been a really dark season for you. Maybe loving yourself all means before you leave here today, finding somebody in your church family to give you a hug as you step into a Christmas season for the first time without a loved one. Maybe it would mean giving or receiving a word of encouragement. Perhaps it's an act of service that you need to ask somebody for to be vulnerable for a minute and ask for what it is that you need. Some quality time with someone that you love. Maybe even doing something alone that you find restorative. That could be the most loving thing that you could do between now and Christmas. What if we acknowledged There is no present we can receive, no treat that we can eat, no decoration or gadget that we can acquire in this next week that will make us feel loved. Rather than trying to create Christmas magic this holiday season, what if we actually got to enter in and experience the majestic nature of what this season means with the people that we love? Rather than get caught up in the consumeristic, over-commercialized swirl of activities and expectation, what if you were to choose to experience the awe and wonder of this season? In solitude, in silence, even while your Christmas cards remain unsent, even while the gifts are not wrapped, or for some of you like Mark, perhaps not yet purchased, what would it look like for you to spend time reflecting on the coming Christ child and what that means for you? Rather than to pursue more, what if you could sit in the less for a few minutes and acknowledge that more is never going to fulfill what it is that you were trying to fulfill anyways? God used this incredible story. The Christ child was not born in a palace of power. It was a a virgin birth, a child out of wedlock, born in a barn that God came to establish his love through, a humble, pure love that is available to us. What would it look like for us to leave here this morning reminded that we are enough Reminded that despite the stories you may tell yourself that you belong. Reminded that you are beloved. I asked a counselor friend recently, is this just something that people who came up from really dysfunctional homes struggle with? Is this just something that people that come from a broken story struggle with? And he said, a hundred percent of people feel like they are not enough. They feel like there is some way they need to measure up more, something that they need to be better at. This is not a woman issue heading into Christmas. Men feel less permission to talk about the ways that they don't feel like they're enough than women do. What would it look like for us to live from a place of being enough, of belonging, of being beloved, rather than the perfect gift 
that picture-perfect reaction to the Christmas gift you look forward to sending, the family recipe that means everything to you, the credit card debt, all of the things that we may pursue to feel a sense of fulfillment or love. May you experience deep and lavish, unchanging, unquenchable, undeniable love of God this season. Church, my prayer is that this year we would experience the miracle of what Christmas is in new and profound ways, that we would experience the power of what this story represents in new ways, that we would experience God's presence. And my prayer is that each and every one of us would experience and relish in so that we could extend that simple love that is available to us. Would you pray with me now for that? God, we just pause. We pause before you and we say, would you show us what that love looks like in our lives? God, I pray right now that you would reveal to us the things that we're pursuing and the ways that we are trying to fill the gaps that only you can fill in our lives. God, I pray that you would challenge us with what it looks like to live as loved people, that you would open our hearts to be able to receive that love, that you would Show us who we are and give us the courage to acknowledge our needs and our vulnerability so that we can live from a loved place. God, I pray we would experience you in new ways today and in this season. Father, we do all of this for your name and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, on your way out today, if you're interested in grabbing some of those invite cards and someone's coming to mind right now that you think could experience a loving invitation from you, check those out. And if there's a way that we could pray for you, if there's a, a need or if this stirred something in you or if there's just, you want some prayer heading into your holiday season, we would love to pray for you as well up here. Otherwise, we can't wait to celebrate Christmas Eve with you on Tuesday night. We'll see you then.